I'm sure most of you watching this will agree that all gun laws are dumb to an extent, but I dug around and I found some really weird and dumb ones, some, some that just didn't make any sense whatsoever. So let's take a look at my top 10 dumbest gun laws in the US. Number 10, turning your rifle into a pistol. Under the National Firearms Act, it's perfectly legal to add a 16 inch barrel to your pistol and a stock and convert it into a rifle. But if you choose to take a rifle and cut down the barrel below 16 inches, it is illegal, even if you remove the stock. So basically, you go one way and it's no big deal. If you go the other, it's 10 years in club fed. So choose wisely. Number nine, ammo component man. In Washington, DC, an individual may not possess ammunition without also holding a valid firearms registration. Until May of 2012, registrants were limited to possessing ammunition of the caliber of the registered weapon only. The ammunition laws in DC were relaxed a little bit in May of 2012, and valid registration holders may now purchase and transport ammunition of any caliber, except 50 BMG. In DC, any usable part of ammunition is considered ammunition. So for example, centerfire casings capable of being reloaded, those are ammunition under current DC police interpretation. Number eight, no vertical foregrips on handguns. This law has a few gray areas, but under the National Firearms Act, if you add a foregrip to a handgun, it changes its classification to an any other weapon or AOW. But in 1993, in a case brought by the ATF, a South Carolina district court concluded that adding a vertical foregrip did not in fact change a pistol to an AOW. But the ATF dropped the charges, so no precedent was ever set there. Today, the ATF still interprets the law that if you install one on a handgun, you're creating an AOW and subject to NFA rules, so I wouldn't try your luck with it. Number seven, food gun ban. Section 210 of the New York State's Agriculture and Markets Law states that no person, firm, or corporation shall manufacture, sell, offer, export, or have in possession for sale in this state any food or food products packed in a container in the shape of a farm and for consumption from any such packaging. This is punishable by a civil penalty of at least $50, but not to exceed $1,000. Number six, Factoring Criteria Point System. Prior to the introduction of the Glock 42, you couldn't get a Glock chambered in 380 ACP in the US. And this isn't because Glock didn't make them, it's because the Gun Control Act of 1968 established criteria on what guns can and can't be imported in the United States. For handguns, the ATF established a point system, in which imported handguns had to hit the required number of points to be legal. These points are based on several things, including stuff like overall length, caliber, frame material, safeties, and even stuff like adjustable sights. Similar to this, you also have the ban on long guns that don't serve a sporting purpose. And 922R, which deals with the number of imported parts you can use to build a rifle banned from importation. Those are both pretty lengthy subjects to get into, so go ahead and look those up if you don't know about them. I wanna take a quick break here and remind you, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. And if you're new here and you think I've earned it, consider subscribing. Now, let's get back to the video. Number five. Handgun rationing. In three states, California, Maryland, and New Jersey, you are limited to only buying one handgun in a 30-day period. While all three of these states' laws vary a little, it is generally illegal for you to purchase multiple handguns in a single month. New York City, though, not to be outdone on stupidity, steps it up and only allows you one firearm period in 90 days. Number four, melting point laws. In five states, New Jersey, New York, Minnesota, Hawaii, and Illinois, they have a form of a melting point law, which basically is a ban on certain handguns that the frame or slide melts below a certain temperature, usually a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, but that varies by state. What it does is basically ban cheap farms such as High Points and even Heritage Rough Riders 22 single action revolvers. Now this doesn't really apply to polymer frame handguns. Number three, hollow point bullet ban. In New Jersey, it is a fourth degree felony punishable by up to 18 months in prison for a person to possess hollow point bullets. While there are a few exceptions to this, such as for sporting purposes, you may not use them for self-defense, even though hollow point bullets have been the standard for self-defense for years now. And as many of you know, overpenetration of the intended target is much less likely with hollow points versus standard non-expanding rounds. Number two, Maryland's magazine ban. While there are several states with magazine bans, Maryland's might just be the dumbest of all. In Maryland, it is illegal to purchase or sell magazines that hold over 10 rounds. However, it is not illegal to possess such magazines, and you can legally go out of state and buy one and bring it home with you, as long as you don't sell it or give it to anyone in Maryland. 
Yes, I'm scratching my head on this one also. It isn't like Maryland is such a big state you can't drive a few hours to a free state and grab you a standard capacity magazine. And number one, you can't buy pistols out of state. Even though in most cases long guns can be purchased out of state, you're not allowed to purchase a handgun out of state unless you have it shipped to an FFL in your own state to complete the background check there. What is really dumb about this law is in most states it's the exact same background check process. This one is really a headache if you want to attend an out-of-state gun show and you will have the added expense of shipping and transfer fees, and that is if the dealer is even willing to do the sale at all. Or if you're like me and live close to other states and you would like to purchase a new handgun in the neighboring state. Now, this law comes to us courtesy of the Gun Control Act of 1968. If you think I missed a dumb gun law, go ahead and put it in the comments below. I may not have even heard of it. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.